This is a conceptual introduction to motion in one dimension. Um, so I have some learning outcomes so that you can have a few goals um, for what you're supposed to gain from watching this video. So there are three learning outcomes. The first one is to be able to identify and describe the instantaneous motion. Secretly, you're going to know that the instantaneous motion is just the instantaneous velocity. You're also going to be able to identify if and also how the motion is changing. The concept here is actually also known as acceleration. Acceleration has something to do with motion changing, whereas velocity itself is just the motion itself. And then even more than that, you're going to be able to describe directions of velocity and acceleration. So I'll put V for velocity and A for acceleration. So V is the symbol that um, physicists and also mathematicians would, would use for velocity and A is the symbol for acceleration. So describing the directions of velocity and acceleration with words like positive and negative. So we might put a minus sign for negative and a plus sign for positive. Or with directions. And with, for directions, we might just use arrows. OK, so I've got some uh, examples where we're going to do all three of these things um, just by labeling some drawings. So an example that we'll start with is a car driving along uh, on a straight road. And we'll talk about whether it moves fast or slow, um, which way it's moving, whether or not it's speeding up or slowing down. So that's one of our examples. Another example we'll study is a rock thrown straight up. And then after that, we'll study a bungee jumper. So a car on a straight road let's just have it uh, so if I want to diagrammatically show this to you um, I'll just start with the straight road so that's as straight as I can draw it what what it's what's meant to happen here though is as if I drew this with a with an actual ruler. There's no bends in it. Um, this is a view from the side, so we'll draw the car. So it's a little square car. Uh, so a view from the side, and definitely not meant to have the car go up and down any hills. This is meant to just be a nice flat road. And also, if you were to look down from above, it still looks straight. That is, it's, uh, it's not going to wind like this way. Um, there's no turning. Okay, so let's start off and have the car. Uh, let's say that it's moving already, So, but I'm going to use these little speed lines to indicate whether or not it's moving fast or slow. And also, actually, we'll just go ahead and write 
that it's moving slowly and it's moving towards the right. So I'll just use this little short arrow to describe that it's moving slow. But a little bit later in time, let's say that it what it did was it sped up. It's moving a little bit faster. I'm going to use the word medium and it is moving a little bit faster towards the right. So I'll put the right arrow and the, you notice the arrow is a little longer. And then a little bit later in time, at some later instant in time, it's moving a lot faster. So I drew these speed lines to indicate it's moving fast. So I'll describe its motion with this word fast. It's headed towards the right quickly. So I'll put this somewhat longer arrow towards the right. And let's say at a later instant in time, here is the car, and let's say that it actually didn't change its motion. So there was no change. It is still traveling fast in the same direction. So these two motions here, the motion earlier in time and the motion a little later in time, actually have the same value. The motion didn't change between these moments in time. But then the car, let's say, is approaching a stop sign or a stoplight, needs to slow down for some reason. So it hits the brakes, starts to slow down, um, and at some later time, its motion is slower. So it does change between this time and this time. So we'll say that it went all the way to slow. It just went straight through medium. Medium happened somewhere in there. So it's only traveling with this small motion arrow. And then a little bit later in time, it's got a motion that's very special called rest. Its speed is zero. It, um, there is no arrow to draw because it's not moving in any particular direction. It's not moving at all. So this is a description of a car on a straight road with different motions. Uh, th these were earlier times and then these were later times. So if I wanted I could go and label the time on the car. So maybe I'll just do that. This happened let's say when the stopwatch was just started at zero seconds this is one second later two seconds later three seconds later four seconds later and five seconds later so these are moments in time but you know time does occur between the moments in time so there was a time for transition we got to transition from slow to medium over a time duration of one second and then another one second later, we transition from medium up to fast. And then another one second of time duration. During this time duration, there is no change in the motion. And then we slow down and slow down to rest. Um, so I'm not going to tell any more of the future story here. But what I am going to do is notice something. Over these times right here, this was a speed up. And over these times, here, between two seconds and three seconds, there was no change in the motion. And then for these times here, there was only ever slowing down. What I'm referring to in the, uh, in the red ink is I'm referring actually to the acceleration. Down below in the blue ink, what I'm referring to is the motion, which we understand as the velocity. So the acceleration is describing how the velocity is changing, and the velocity is just describing the instantaneous values of the motion. Um, so if we look back at what our learning outcomes are, we're identifying instantaneous motions. These are the slows, mediums, and fasts, but also the arrows towards the right. We're moving towards the right only in this uh, situation, except for at the, at the end where the car is at rest. Identify if and how the motion is changing. That's what we've done in red. So all of the details about motion changing is captured by the acceleration. 
Now describing directions of V and A with words like positive and negative or with arrows. You can see that we've already done the arrows for the velocity. The velocity is only ever towards the right, except for when the object is at rest. We don't really have an arrow to draw. Up here, though, speeding up, no change, and slowing down. If we identify, this is something that we're free to do. Let's say that towards the right is referred to as the positive direction of movement or the positive direction of gaining ground, or the positive direction of acceleration. We'll say that when we're speeding up over here, our acceleration is towards the right. That's the direction in which the motion is gaining. Over here, the acceleration is towards the left instead. Towards the left is the direction in which the motion is gaining, that is, Towards the right, the motion is losing, but towards the left, while this car is moving towards the right, the acceleration is towards the left. If towards the right is positive, we say that the acceleration is negative over here, and the acceleration is positive over here. That's just in reference to this. Uh, essentially, it's our choice. In the middle here, though, is interesting. There is no change to the motion, so there is no acceleration, but that doesn't mean that there is no acceleration. It just means that the acceleration has value equal to zero. All right. Um, let's turn this on its head. No, actually, let's not do that. So the next example is a rock. And I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to leave a space. I'll tell you why in just a second. Uh, thrown up into uh, the air. So the reason I left the space is I'm only going to describe the rock after it was thrown up into the air. So I'm not going to describe the throw itself. I'm going to describe the, what the rock does after you throw it. So here is the ground. Here is the rock, and what the rock does is it, it, right after you throw it, it's going to be moving the fastest, upwards. And then a little bit later in time, it'll be higher up, but it will be moving slower. And a little bit later in time, it will be higher up, and maybe moving even slower. There's a point in time, though, that the rock is neither moving up nor is it moving down. It's momentarily, just for a moment, not a second, not a microsecond even, an even smaller amount of time, just at an instant. It's neither moving up nor down, so it is at rest. But what's interesting is if you go to the moment in time right after this, it will be moving down. So I'm just going to draw it over here right after that moment in time, it has picked up a little motion downwards. And if you wait a little longer, it will be moving faster downwards. And if you wait a little bit longer, it'll be moving even faster downwards. So the motion is up fast, up a little slower, up even slower. Let me make this a little longer. And then there is no motion just for an instant in time. But then, it transitions into moving down slowly, down faster, and down very much faster. Okay, the acceleration is interesting. In this case, we slowed down while heading upwards, so the acceleration was down. And then we continued to slow down while we headed upwards. Acceleration was down. What's interesting is if you look between this time and this time, we are transitioning from moving upwards to moving downwards, which is an acceleration that's down. Even though the object is that this instant in time it's at rest, it is an instant of time such that the motion is changing downwards. It's gaining motion downwards. The acceleration continues to be down the whole time. 